Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is All Time Wrestling, ATW Abu Dhabi Rumble. This is the expansion to the original All Time Wrestling, giving you two new variants, the Free For All variant and the Abu Dhabi Rumble variant, where you can now play the game with three and four players. Each variant is very different than the base game, but I think um, the Free For All kind of shares a little uh, similarities. Now, this is a review I did quite a a while ago for ATW and so I'm gonna basically do this review as a explain a little bit of the base game, a little bit of the free-for-all, a little bit of the rumble, how the game plays, the basic idea of setup. And I'll give you all the basic coverage of it. I'm gonna skip over a few things, of course, because there's quite a lot involved in each of the different variants of the game and deck building and characters and their abilities, but I think I'll give you a good synopsis of how the game is set up, how it is played, and of course, my review. Now normally I say that setup's quite easy, but in this case there's quite a lot of different variables set up depending on what game mode you're playing and how much variation you want to use. But the basic ATW is going to use a match momentum board. This is going to be for the two player variant. It starts off at zero and like a tug of war it will move from one side to the other giving benefits to the player who has the momentum. If you're playing a multiplayer game mode, which is going to be the Abu Dhabi Rumble or the Free For All, etc., you're going to actually get the larger momentum board where each player keeps track of their own momentum that moves up and down based on the momentum they gained or lose, and it'll have a player count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, right, there is a 5 and 6 potential player option with expansions. I don't have that, but this plays up to 4 players with what I currently have, but the board is set up for up to 6. You're also going to get to choose a character or characters. If you're playing the base mode of the game, you'll select a character, that character will come with a deck, the back of the card will illustrate what cards that specific wrestler is going to get, as well as the all-time wrestling basic cards they're going to get. Um, it can also have this card here. This is a rumble card, which will allow you to uh, note specific characteristics for the rumble mode, the all Abu Dhabi. Um, and you're gonna basically create your own deck for your character. However, if you're playing the rumble mode, you're actually going to be able to create a custom deck if you would like uh, with attack cards. There was a certain number of rules listed as to how many pins you can have, how many cards with certain powers you can have, how much power you can have in your starting hand. Uh, speaking of starting hands, with whatever deck that you do make or have, you're going to be drawing or choosing, I should say, five cards from your deck with specific limitations. Each player is going to get a player count in the multiplayer mode, or if you're not playing multiplayer mode, you're simply not going to use them. You're also going to be getting a all-time wrestling health and stamina tracker, which you will set up based on whatever mode you're playing. Each of your character cards will have a stamina a low stamina marker, an S, uh, uh, a health marker, and a low health marker. And you're going to be placing them down on your board here. Uh, the larger portions are your health and stamina, and the smaller ones are going to be your low stamina and low health, which is where you incur injuries. Your player boards are also going to give you specific abilities, whether that be uh, permanent abilities, reversal abilities, one-time effect, two-time effect abilities, where you'll remove cubes at certain opportunities throughout combat to use the special benefit that you your character has, as well as, of course, whatever you do throughout the game, whether it be recover ta or, or taunt or something else, it will say on your board what abilities or bonuses that you gain and what your opponent gains for you utilizing that. Each player is also going to be getting one of these die here, which you might need two, specifically when you're trying to uh, avoid being pinned. And when you're playing the multiplayer mode, you're also going to need these player cards. So whatever player you are, I am player three, you're going to take the other player cards, the small deck of cards here for one, two, and four when playing a four-player game. This will allow you to, to tell people which character or player you are targeting for that specific round. If I want to attack you and you're player two, I'll take the player two card and put it face down along with my attack attack card. And so that's pretty much the idea of setup. You're going to take your momentum board, whatever one you use, depending on the setup, your character card, specifically depending on the setup as well, and your deck, along with if, whether or not you're using the multiplayer variants, whether you're going to add these like resilience cards when you get attacked by more than one player. If you're using special rumble cards, depending on if you're playing the, uh, the Abu Dhabi rumble, which you'll shuffle in place within reach of all players, your main stamina and HP board, and of course your markers. And then from there, you're pretty much ready to go. Yeah. It's a lot to explain, I know, but hopefully it gives you a good idea. All-time wrestling is played with initiative. An initiative determines whether or not you're going to be on the attack. 
the offense and whether or not you're going to be on the defense. If I have initiative, then I'm going to be playing attack cards. Now, when you're playing the variants with the Abu Dhabi Rumble or with the uh, Free For All, initiative will go clockwise and you cannot hold initiative. It'll always be passed. No matter what, even if a card says you gain initiative and you're the third player in order, it's going to go to the next player, but you might get a different benefit. Uh, there is a player aid which explains how to play the game when playing the basic mode, which will say that basically when you start the game off, you've got your five cards in hand and you're going to select to do one of these three things. You can either A, draw a card and you'll lose the initiative, passing it to somebody else um, or of course the other player. You'll be able to gain three stamina and lose the initiative or you'll play a card. You can play a card out and then you're going to basically read the card. All of these cards are going to have unique benefits and bonuses. It'll tell you how much health the player is going to lose if you succeed at the card, how much stamina you have to spend in order to play it, what you need to roll in order to successfully hit your opponent, and then how much momentum you gain. There's also a bunch of little symbology on the card that will allow you to do certain things like maybe pin your opponent or stun, etc, etc. And then there's additional bonus variations for the game if you want to play a more advanced mode, which I highly do not suggest for your first few games. Just play the first two player game modes out. But there are like symbols in the bottom that you can chain attacks, powerful attacks, one after another. And so you'll play that card, you'll roll the die to see if it works out, and then you can combo attacks from there. And of course the player, your opponent, will actually have the defensive abilities. And depending on the game mode that you're playing, it'll, they'll allow them to like discard cards or play their abilities, to do reversals, to gain the initiative. But in general, otherwise, if they don't do any of that stuff, you will uh, be on the offensive, you'll attack. If you succeed, you'll do damage to your opponent, and then you can go ahead and still have the initiative and continue pushing the momentum. Now, momentum works no matter what, in whatever game mode the same way. When your momentum shifts in your favor, either in the yellow or red zone, you will receive uh, bonuses to hit. It will no longer cost you five plus to hit, it will be four plus in the yellow area or three plus in the red area. So having momentum is very powerful. If your opponent has low HP, you'll get benefits as well to being able to hit until you're able to pin. At what point, eventually, players are going to have to take two dice and they're going to see if they get pinned. Now, certain cards are what you'll need to play in order to pin your opponent, but they'll have up to three attempts, they'll roll the dice, and if they roll the dice equal to their health or higher, they can get out of the pin. However, if they fail, they'll have to roll again, and after the third attempt, if they're unsuccessful, they're unsuccessful, they will get pinned. Um, if you're playing unique variations, like if you're playing the uh, free-for-all mode, this mode is where you're just simply trying to pin one person, but no one wants you to do that because you'll win the game, so they'll actually come out as long as they're active and try and stop you from doing that. They'll jump in and roll their dice and check their HP, and if they're successful, they'll take you off of that other player as you're pinning them. Or if you're playing the, the Abu Dhabi Rumble, how that works is you're actually trying to throw each other out of the ring. You'll be using these special Rumble cards that you'll be able to draw in the game, depending on there's certain ways you can draw these cards here that can ring players out. And you'll actually be using additional characters in the game as well. Um, and these are the cards that you'll be utilizing in combination with your attack cards in order to throw people off. They'll basically function the same way as pinning a player does, but the difference is once you toss them out, they'll have to pick out their new character. And usually in this mode, you'll have two or three wrestlers that you can select from. And if you toss all your opponent's characters off the ring, they're kind of, they're out. And it's kind of this free for all, this like not even a free for all. A free for all is where one person gets pinned, but it's this rumble where everything gets thrown out except for your team. And if that happens, you win the game. There's a lot to talk about in this game. Uh, each character is going to have their own unique abilities that you can trigger. There's defensive and offensive abilities. There's combination chain attacks that will happen. And there is also unique cards that you'll be utilizing depending on the game mode, the game style. There's a bunch of different characters. There's so many characters, I didn't even list all of them. And they're all from the characters uh, from the old school style wrestling. Uh, so yes, a lot of stuff in all time wrestling. But that's the basic idea of the game. You're going to be throwing cards out trying to continue to contain initiative, utilizing your stamina to pay for those cards, chaining attacks, comboing attacks, holding the initiative to do more and more and more damage until they get low enough where you can pin them, they can't roll out, they're down, you win. 
or if you're playing the other game modes, you throw them off of the ring, or you simply pin one person and have nobody else able to prevent you from doing so, and that, in that case, you'll win the game as well. All time wrestling with two new game modes and more game modes and additional new players that you can play the game with. This game's got way more complex, way more stuff that you can do in it, and it's all situated in the rule book nice and clear, clearly for you to understand. Well, anyway, that's the basic idea of how to play the game. I kind of just gave you a rundown of the idea of it. There's also an original video I did for the base game, which I'll go ahead and put a link down below so you can see that. But I just wanted to gush over all the different things in the game for my review, which let's go ahead and get into it now. All right, some caveats first before I cover my review. And the first thing I'll talk about is that you can withdraw in multiplayer game modes, meaning if you don't want to engage in the attack by choosing a player and an attack card, then you can choose to sit out. And when you do that, you'll be able to gain stamina or draw a card, which you'll need to do at certain points of the game when your stamina meter runs too low. If you don't have the stamina, you must simply withdraw even if you do not want to. Withdrawing is not great because it prevents you from being able to prevent your opponents from being pinned, which can in turn win, have another opponent win the game, or having people be thrown out of the ring. It's another way in which you can go ahead and combo attacks on certain players who are ahead. This is a great way to kind of keep the game balanced. If player one has all the wrestlers and everybody else is down to one, they might all jump on that player, which makes thematic sense in sport of wrestling, We you'll see the specific teams kind of work together to a certain extent to push those people on the top of the hill and throw them off and make it kind of more of an even playing field. This game has tons of evenness about it, but it also has some complexities that can change the will of the game into your favor. Utilizing combos and chains, where you're going to be playing these cards from your hand that have unique benefits that you can add to make the game more complex. I love the idea of dropping down cards that chain onto each other to do additional damage, to give you additional benefits, following that you're able to do so, matching color to color. I like the idea of having unique new game modes in the game where you can do a free-for-all, where you just have to pin one person to win, but nobody else wants you to do that, kind of like this Cutthroat Caverns type of style of game. Or you can have simply a team mode where you're choosing your own team, making your own deck, and then going head to head with other players, trying to throw their entire team out of the ring in the rumble, utilizing rumble cards that give you benefits, whether it be on the attack or on the defense using the red or blue cards. Having the ability to craft your own deck as well as gain special abilities is always fun, and making sure that all your characters have their own unique special abilities is also great as well. With different game modes comes different powers, different abilities, and each character feels different. They each have their own kind of unique feel based on the wrestler that you are playing with. And of course, there are a ton of characters that you have seen if you are a wrestling fan, like Johnny All Time or the Dynamite Kid. Uh, you have the Loose Cannon Brian Pillman, which also has uh, two unique styles of play, actually, with two unique character cards. Um, and then, of course, OMZ, etc., etc., Junkyard Dog, there's Andre the Giant. That was the first, when I first reviewed the game, Andre the Giant was in there, and I really dug him, especially because uh, my wife and I really love the Princess Bride. The, the artwork for the game is excellent. There is beautiful artwork illustrating all the wrestlers and their special moves. Each deck of cards is going to have their own unique cards for uh, the specific characters you're playing as. If I'm playing as Nick Aldis, then I'm going to have his cards which are specified as to whose cards they are based in the bottom middle. It's also going to tell you the all-time wrestling cards that are added, whether it be like a slam or an Irish whip or a suplex that kind of make up your deck. What's also cool about this game too is not only is it kind of a deck builder or each character has their own unique deck, which you can kind of decide what game mode you're playing with, but you also get to select your starting hand. There are a few rules as to what you can choose and what you cannot choose, but it's a way to kind of allow yourself to start making combos in order to defeat your opponent. And the player aid is very useful as well. It explains what you do when you're attacking on one side, what you do when you're defending on the other. Quality for the game. I love the fact that the boards are also double thick so that you can fit your little cubes for stamina and health and move them along, utilizing one as your kind of energy or mana to play cards out and the other as your health to determine how close you are to being pinned. And also there's benefits to spending stamina to regain health to prevent yourself from getting pinned. So if you're low on health and you're about to go down, you can dump a lot of your stamina to push your HP marker to the limit to kind of keep yourself in the game when rolling when you have to to determine if you have been pinned or not. I like the additional player boards that have been added for the multiplayer variant, keeping it still simple enough to where you know how it plays in the base game. Every time you kind of push away from like the base game that goes to the free-for-all, which is very, very similar to the base game with a few unique rules, to the rumble, which is completely different, still has the same essence of the all-time wrestling genre. The same way of momentum, the same way of initiative, and the cards that you're playing, even if it's more customizable and allowing you to play with a team of your favorite characters from wrestling's history. 
Overall, quality of the game is excellent. I love the artwork style. This is probably the best wrestling game I have played um, for board games. So this game has pretty much a little bit of everything now. There's a lot of complexities that you can have. This is a good two-player game where you play back and forth with just all-time wrestling. And now they've introduced more players, more wrestlers, more game modes that work together in tandem that allow you to do combo attacks against the same player if you want. They get benefits by drawing these resilience cards, protecting them, but they also start going down as well. And you can topple the king with these type of games here. The only minor negatives I have for all time wrestling is that each of the game modes are different in unique ways and you'll have to learn each of these game modes. There is quite a bit of rules pertaining to the multiplayer uh, variant. Each character has its own feel to it, and because of that, it has character anatomy bios, which will go into depth as to what the characters all do and how you play rounds for each of the different uh, specific variants, and they all definitely feel very different, which is a benefit, and it's also a curse, because you'll have to go through and make sure that you clarify any different rule changes, like initiative functions very differently when playing multiplayer, or how you pin somebody, or how you throw somebody out of a ring, or what special card you have to use and that can be uh, challenging. There's quite a bit to understand. However, if you've already played the base game and you like the base game, the rules are going to be pretty, pretty simple to gather because you've already known about 60 to 70 percent of the rules and this just throws on additional features that allow you to play with more players. So other than that, it's probably the main negatives I have for the all-time wrestling game. Ah, it's fun. There's so much content with all-time wrestling, and if you like the original stuff, then this is going to be another one that you probably want to pick up, especially if you're sitting there playing with somebody else, and a friend joins, another wrestling fan, and they have to sit and wait for their turn. Now they don't have to, and now you can jump on with another player, or even two more with additional content. Yep, all-time wrestling, Abu Dhabi Rumble, the free-for-all stuff, all this stuff is in the game. Take a look down below if you're interested. For me, I'm not a huge wrestling fan, but I have watched quite a bit of wrestling, especially when I was a kid. And I just love to see all these wrestlers kind of jump in and have their own board game space now. Yeah, it is a solid game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game All Time Wrestling. And if you're looking for the game, there's a link down below that will either take you to the Kickstarter page so that you can notify yourself when the campaign goes live, or it'll already be active and you can go ahead and click the link or if you're even later to the party, then this whole link will direct you to a place where you can pick up the game after the campaign is now over. Either way, you can check out the link down below. You can also check out more of our videos here. Go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, whatever you'd like. Let us know about what you think about the game All Time Wrestling. This is a game you've picked up before and played. It's kind of like a little hidden jewel where I've jumped on and played with my wrestling buddies and they've all enjoyed it. So I know if you know, or you are a wrestling fan, especially the all time greats back in the day, this is gonna be one to definitely take a look at. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to jumping in with some more all time wrestling with you next time.